Hey guys, we're in Orlando, Florida at the Cat Trike Factory. We're going to take a look around, meet some of the folks here that uh, put together your cat trikes, and say hello to Mark Eglin, who is, uh, I think, going to show us around. So come on with me, let's take a look. Hey! Hey Gary, how you doing? Welcome to Cat Trike. Thanks, that's great to be here. Good. Uh, I'm Tice, I'm one of the sales staff, and let me take you to, to the office back here. Sounds good, lead All the way. Right. Mark, hi. Hi, Gary. So nice to see the laid back report. Come to the Catrike facility. Thank you. It's great to be here. Um, I'm hoping you maybe can show us around a little bit today. I think we can do that. We can give you a little factory tour and um, see what you think. I'd love to do it. Let's go. All right, All right guys. We are on the floor of the Catrike factory with Mark, and uh, we're going to start at the beginning, I guess, Mark. And if you would, tell us uh, what goes on here, and we'll work on our way down the line. Sure, we'll take you through the whole production system today and um, we'll start out where the whole thing starts. So this is uh, the production we're doing today. Um, so we start out, we call it a Hijunka board. So we do Toyota production system, uh, lean manufacturing, one piece flow, just in time. A lot of those things we uh, have involved in the cat way of doing our manufacturing. So the Hijunka board is, uh, Hijunka is a word for leveling, so we don't want to make the same model over and over. We want to have a combination that we get the most efficient production. So we're doing 14 trikes today. Uh, we're, we're on number six, it looks like. Um, so we got a ways to go. Uh, this is all of our aluminum in-house. It's, uh, you know, we get shipments in every week. Um, we have about a week's worth of safety stock. So in case, uh, you know, our vendor doesn't come through with us, we can still make trikes. And it's also like the grocery store, first in, first out. So all the oldest stuff is, should be loaded in the front. So we keep everything fresh. So let's move on down the line and see what else is going on here. We're gonna make a villager, so Robert's gonna start out with fabrication. So he's gonna pick the aluminum tubing. There's four different tubing size. Uh, put them on the shop walker, uh, cut the mainframe to length, and then we'll move on down to uh, bending and putting a serial number on and slotting and notching and we'll go go from right there. Down. Yeah, so we call this our shop walker. Uh, it's basically a uh, pegboard on wheels, has all the provisions to hold um, all the parts. So ultimately, when this gets to the welder, everything will be bent and fabricated. So we have a cut list here. So the Ola uh, mainframe, or the, we're doing the Villager, 42.75 inches. <laughs> so we set the little gauge to 42.75 inches. And this is a super safe saw that uh, you can't get your hand in there. You have to push, use both hands to push the button. Now it's the correct length. We recycle all the waste. All right. All right. We have all of our tubes for to build a villager. Now we come to our CNC parts and our um, laser cut parts. So this is, uh, we all do all the prototyping in-house. So this is our hinge. Okay. So yeah, we're not machinists, so we prototype them and then we have uh, a machine shop make all the parts for us. Okay. So this is our pick list. So we're doing a villager. So it shows everything on the pick list, what Robert needs to put on the shop walker. Two head tubes, some dropouts. This is an adjustable trike. Um, it's not a folding trike. So end caps. We got the pivots for the adjustable seat. A gusset for the cross member. And we're on to bend the mainframe. So this is our SoCo bender. It's a numeric control. It's not computer eyes. So we have to set the stops for the bends. Um, so we're going to bend the two inch mainframe. It's a mandrel bender, so the mandrel goes inside the tube to keep it from collapsing when you bend it. So we obviously have the uh, program set up for the um, bends that we need to make. 
So there's two bends in the mainframe. So this is the first bend. And then we also build all the quality control uh, in the manufacturing. So after we bend the tube, we're gonna measure the bends of the tube to make sure we're not passing bad parts down the line. Okay. Got a little acetone to, to get the grease off that we use for bending. And then Robert's gonna measure the, uh, the bends that he did to make sure we're uh, within the range we need. So there's a chart on the wall there um, that's a pass fail for the bends. So we, can, we have a little uh, area that we can you know, get within to make sure it's a good part. Are we looking good, Robert? Yep. Okay, so now we're gonna put the serial number and our logo, we're gonna etch that into the frame. The part's loaded. We're gonna shut this door. This is kind of a soundproof boost because this thing's a, a pretty loud. Okay. Sounds like a Japanese motorcycle. <laughs> What's really going on in there, folks? It took so long because we've made so many catch tracks that the serial numbers are getting really hot. It's like, it's like 20 <laughs> digits long, of course. Yeah. Now you've weakened the two because you hit so many. Yeah, let's take a. There you go. We got the serial number and the logo. So Robert's gonna uh, notch the end of the frame. This is uh, a fixture for notching. So we use cordless drills and a hole saw to do the coping. So very re repeatable. That's the end notch at the end of the mainframe. So this is a slaughter uh, we made in-house um, to make the slot for the relief for the boom clamp. So it's just a simple PLC uh, program with uh, some air motors and an electric motor. another air motor on the back side uh, we have a you know patent on our piece boom um, it has an indexing tab so there's a notch in the frame that's going to start the motor in the back here in a second so it's making the notch on the top and then we have uh, the first motor is going to plunge to make the relief so it's a tapered milling bit so this motor here is going to plunge into the uh, end of the slot so it, we don't have any cracks. And there you have it. Look at that. So you can see the slot with a relief hole in the end, and then there's a indexing notch on the back side. All right, so we're gonna bend the seat back um, frame. So this is about a one meter piece that we're gonna do eight bends in. So this is our uh, full CNC bender. Um, so it's accurate to 0.1 degree. And there's a stack die on there. So we have two different radiuses um, that we use to you know, do the bends. So we got the recurve for the shoulders, lumbar support. So Robert's selecting the program, he's going to load the part, 
This is also a mandrel bender, so the mandrel goes in the inside of the tube. Keep it from collapsing when it's bent. It's using the top die right now and it's rotating down to the smaller die on the smaller radius to do the bend of the seats for the top. So a lot of the uh, tasks that go on um, you can kind of multitask and do two things at once. So this program runs for probably about 45 seconds and uh, the fabricators can go do something else while this is running. There you go, so eight bends, uh, frames has to be very accurate, uh, make sure everything's parallel. Again, we measure the, uh, the part after it's bent to make sure uh, we have a good part before we pass it down the line. Hopefully Robert gives us a thumbs up. <laughs> and then, thumbs up! <laughs> this is uh, coping for the, the pivots on the bottom of the seat. This is an adjustable seat. So we use a large uh, radius hole saw to make this cut. And it's almost like using a straight saw, but it's more repeatable and accurate. We're gonna bend the uh, chain stays here. So this is a Italian Ercolina bender. Um, it's just got a former die on it. This one does not have a mandrel. Uh, the uh, bends are pretty mild, um, so we don't necessarily need a mandrel to make these bends. So he dials in the degree of bend, and it also has spring back built into it. So whatever you bend to, the aluminum springs back a little bit. So we put that into the equation when we're bending apart. So we're bending the cross member here. So each diameter tube, we have four different diameters. They all have a dedicated bender so we don't have to do die changes. a cross member for a villager. Well, how we're running the line right now at uh, 14 a day. Uh, fabrication one goes to this point and then we switch off to fabrication two. So we'll get Axel over here to do some notching of the cross member and move on down to the welding station. So we have a system to keep the line moving, uh, make it as efficient as possible. So every operator out here has a tablet, so you can see here. So um, we're running 14 a day. Um, so he's on his fourth trike, which is a Dumont. Uh, his cycle time is 21 minutes. He's seven minutes into it. So um, this tracks uh, everything that he does. Also shows the time that it takes him to do everything and the tasks that he has to do on that particular model. So every task is measured um, at a normal pace in the factory. And then we divide the number of operators by how long it takes us to make a trike. Um, and then we put an extra 15% time on there so nobody's rushed. And this keeps the line moving in the beginning of the day, at the end of the day, at the same pace so we don't make any mistakes. So this is a, a notching fixture for the cross member for the villager. Um, so we do the uh, two holes um, drilled into the cross member um, for the seat brace to fit into. And then the two notches on the end, the coping will be for the headsets.
there you have it, villager cross member. So we're at the hinge welding station. So we have a fixture we call the Beast. It's actually a milling machine and a welding fixture at the same time. So we had to figure out how we're gonna um, mill the frame in half to keep it all indexed the same and then uh, drop a hinge in there and weld it. So um, this is the station we do that. And then after the hinge is tacked in, then we can do the finishing welding on the table with the gusseting and the finish welding for the hinge. And we uh, have specific hardware that we load up in the hinge with um, shims that um, takes up the gap for the powder coat and then it's a steel uh, hardware so when we use the um, all that um, hardware to weld in the um, hinge. Yeah so you can see uh, we've been through one welding station these are our three shop walkers so we have buffers between operators so this is between welding one and welding two so we have three buffers um, so we make sure that one person doesn't get ahead of the other guy, then they're waiting on them. So some of our trikes, the space frames, we're making it about 170 minutes, and our uh, full uh, folding, full suspension trike to Dumont's about 340 minutes. So we have to have a little flexibility in our line. That's why we have our buffers, so we can run all the different products through the same line which is another powerful thing with uh, lean manufacturing and the Toyota production system. So now this has gone through, uh, this is another trike. Um, this is a 559, one of our folding trikes, 26 inch rear wheel. Um, so we have the hinge uh, welded in to the mainframe and you can see all of our beautiful welds, very artistic, very strong. Um, and then uh, all the beautiful gussets. And then we have the cross member has been weld. So a lot of welding sub assemblies. So this trike is ready to put into the welding fixture to weld everything together. So we also have our frame lock, which holds the frame together when we fold it. Right. So this is our Dumont uh, welding fixture. So uh, Robert's um, welding the seat cross member um, into this. Our welding fixtures are also on a carousel and they're balanced so the welder doesn't have to stand on their head. Um, there's still some pretty tight areas in there, um, so they have to do a little gymnastics, a little yoga to get in the little tight spots. But they are very skilled welders that have all been trained and certified. So we're here at our new cat washer. Uh, it took us several months to build this contraption. Um, so this is Justin Calla, one of our mechanical engineers, and he's going to show you how it works. All right, Justin, thanks for showing us uh, this yeah. machine. Tell us a little bit about it. Okay, yeah, so the, uh, the cat washer basically is kind of self-explanatory. It washes the cat trikes after they're welded. Uh, it's a multi-step uh, washing process. Uh, so basically the first thing you do is you're gonna load the frame into the, the washer. All right. So it has, it has two different levels. Uh, the top level is for our, our full length trikes, the, the space frame models, and then all the folding trikes get broken down uh, and hung at that lower level so that way they stay within the spray pattern of the, the washing uh, chemicals. So yeah, you basically close the door, hit the green button, or the orange button. The trike is gonna start rotating. Uh, it's rotating so that way the chemical gets an even coverage on the frame, uh, and the first chemical that we use is acid. Uh, so what the acid does is it etches the aluminum, um, and what, basically what that means is if you were to look at the material under a microscope, it would look like jagged, it would have rough peaks and valleys and things like that. Um, the etching basically knocks that down and smooths out the, the tubing to get it ready for powder coating. That's basically what this is. This is all preparation for powder coating. Uh, so first step, we'll spray the acid. Um, it's going to run through. It's going to sit on there for a few minutes uh, just to let the chemical reaction happen. After that. Um, the second uh, washing step is to rinse the acid off with the deionized water. Uh, so it's going to rinse the frame, uh, still rotating, make sure it gets even coverage. Uh, and then the final step is going to be, uh, it's going to spray a sealing chemical on there. Uh, and what that does is that prevents uh, any more oxidation from happening to the frame uh, because we don't want to have any, any oxidation on the surface uh, after it's been etched because that can introduce more rough surface roughness. Um, between between when you do this and you powder coat it right. in that period of time. Exactly. So yeah, this, this took roughly eight months to um, design and build. We did all this in-house. Uh, we have all you know the CAD models of everything, which is really cool. Uh, we have renders. 
photorealistic renders of it so you can compare like what it looks like now to what uh, the photo renders look like. Um, and it was a really fun project. So not only do we design trikes, uh, but we also design machines to make them, all the tooling, all the fixtures. This is Nick, uh, powder coating. Um, it looks like a villager. And we put the base coat on. We have a white base coat. Um, and then we're going to do a translucent blue uh, on, a top coat on this. And then it'll go back in the oven to cure uh, for another 20 minutes after this powder coating. So powder coating has a... Uh, shoots the powder through the gun and it's got a static electricity charge to it so it sticks onto the frame and so he just has to really pay attention to make sure the thickness is all uniform uh, especially on our beautiful translucent um, colors so they're see-through so if it's heavier on some areas than the other then you can get a little discoloration but it really shows off our craftsmanship and our welds and um, everything that goes into our cat right It's one of the few areas that really are still done by hand and not machine in essence, right? Yeah, I mean, we're obviously at, uh, welding by hand. We're doing a lot of the notching. Uh, but yeah, this is a, a definitely a, a hand process. Um, there is some automated um, powder co coating devices. Um, that's like a big investment. And then, you know, if we made the same frame over and over, we could probably do something like that. But we have, um, you know, now nine different frames, um, all in different configurations, especially the folding trikes are three different pieces. Well, actually, the full suspension trike is four different pieces that are powder coated separately. So it'd be really tough to automate this. Um, it's not impossible. And, you know, as we grow, uh, we build more machinery automation um, and then, you know, get the skilled people to run the machines and do the maintenance and, you know, upkeep on them. This is another translucent blue uh, trike, so it's our electric blue. We'll see which model this is. It looks like a Dumont coming out. Um, so it's been in the oven for 20 minutes. Uh, had the base coat of white on it, and this is the second coat. So it's probably about 400 degrees right now. Uh, within five minutes, you can probably touch it. Translucent uh, powder really shows off our welds and craftsmanship. So this is our new Eola frame. Um, so it was designed for manufacturing. Uh, we, you know, went back to our roots and made a really beautiful space frame that, you know, pretty much anybody can ride. Um, this track's going to come in at 1995. Um, it's about the 30th one off the line. We have three beautiful colors. So this is our sky blue. So it has one bend in the mainframe. Um, very elegant and simple design and um, yeah Eric's just putting all the hardware and decals on it so we're at the second assembly station here so this is Kenton uh, we have a beautiful uh, Dumont in lava red so he's just putting the decals on um, all the hardware's been put on um, looks like some linkage needs to be hooked up to the swing arm we got the rollers for when it folds um, the shock boom clamp everything uh, put together all the hinge hardware uh, the, the hinge hats to hold it together with the quick release and uh, ready to go to the next uh, assembly station Thank you. the cat is going on Nice. 
right, we've been through assembly one, assembly two. We're going to the third assembly station. So they're going to be uh, picking wheels. Uh, we have these wheel racks, kind of a supermarket. It's a pull system. So what's ever utilized today, they just replenish tomorrow. Yeah, we have our padded seat assembly station here. Uh, Ricardo. Ricardo has been here at Catrike for 10 years doing a, a magnificent job for us. So um, all the handlebars uh, mounting the cranks. Uh, bottom bracket on the boom. So every bottom bracket and crank is assembled with care. So we have the torque wrench to match the torque settings uh, specified by the manufacturer. So we're doing FSA cranks and bottom brackets. Beautiful FSA Gossamer crank. They also did some Catrack branding on the chain guard for us. That's a triple, isn't it, Mark? Yeah, we're using a triple chain ring in front and 10 speed in the back. Not everybody can get those, I understand. <laughs> that is correct. We work some magic with our vendors. Um, we have a beautiful relationship with them. We worked with them a long time. And uh, they appreciate us as much as we appreciate them, I'm sure. Now we're going to put the uh, front derailleur on and be ready for packaging. Yeah, put all the brake cables, the uh, shifter cables on the handlebars. So he's picking all the parts. Um, we try to get all the parts in the station uh, as close as possible to eliminate all the wasted movement. Um, doesn't put any value into the the trike for the final customer, so um, we'll go to receiving uh, a little later in the tour. And um, basically, when it comes in the factory, we check it in and then uh, put it right to the point of use, all the parts. So we're basically touching everything twice as the ultimate uh, goal in uh, assembling and lean manufacturing. This doesn't look like it's going to be automated anytime soon. <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> that is. That'd be an incredible. advanced robot. <laughs> it would have to be. A little final shine into the bubble wrap, into the box, and headed to a dealer near, near you. you. The amazing Ricardo Torres. Thank you. This is Chris Miller. Uh, he does material handling uh, and also builds all of our beautiful Catrack wheels. So we're doing a rear hub for a standard uh, hub for all Catracks except for the 700. So we're doing a 32 spoke uh, triple cross wheel and he's feeding the spokes by hand and then he's going to go to the lacing machine uh, to start lacing the spokes onto the rim. All right, so he's positioning the hubs and the spokes so he can load the rim up. And then this is our new beautiful Holland Mechanic uh, lacing machine. It's been in our factory about six months. So new machine, new technology, uh, makes very accurate, precise wheels. So it's spinning the rim, looking for the uh, valve stem hole and then so he's feeding the uh, spokes um, into a trigger that shoots a nipple through the back side of the rim um, onto the spoke and we have a program for how many revolutions um, the nipple gets spun onto the spokes um, so the idea here is to 
have the tension fairly nice when it comes out of the lacing machine. So when we put it into the robot that chews the wheel, um, the robot has a lot less work to do. He's laced the wheel, uh, the, the spokes uh, triple cross, so every spoke crosses three other spokes. And that is it. It took me 68 seconds. Boom. <laughs> so onto the truing machine, we can watch the robot chew the wheel now. So this is our new uh, truing robot. Um, so it has new technology in this that um, after it tensions the spokes, it uh, dewinds it, it's doing right now. So it's taking the stress out of the, the spokes and the spoke head and the nipples and then it's gonna go through it again um, after it dewinds it to make a super accurate um, wheel. We are here at Research and Development at Catrike. So I'm going to show you a lot of different things here in R&D, but uh, what I'd like to start off with is just showing you a trike model um, on, on screen here. We use SolidWorks for our CAD package. Uh, so I'll show you like a fully assembled trike, and then we'll move on and I'll show you a few other cool things like fixtures. I'll show you how we uh, inspect the fixtures, how we build the fixtures, uh, and just some of the other cool tools that we use here uh, in Catrike R&D. Right here on screen is a uh, Catrike Eola. This is our newest model that we just uh, released this month. Um, and so, yeah, on screen here you can see uh, pretty much a complete, complete assembled trike. Uh, we build all of our products in SolidWorks uh, before we really start anything else just to make sure everything fits properly. Um, we're not going to have any collisions with certain components and uh, make sure we have proper chain chain clearance and uh, things like that. So we just like to build a, a full model here, put all the parts in there, and just kind of see what it looks like um, when we're starting off. So you can see they're pretty detailed. We have our logos on the hubs. We can rotate the wheels. Here's a trike frame. Um, and yeah, we're looking for clearance with tie rod. Uh, because we snake the chain through this little opening here. We want to make sure there's no interference with anything like that. Um, so yeah, we'll build that model. And then what's really cool about this, once we're happy with the way all this looks, you know, we kind of have a rough idea of what we want our geometry to be like, rider height, um, you know, seat height, seat angle, things like that. Um, we'll start off with that and then we'll go ahead and we'll actually make this. We'll prototype it. Um, so yeah, we did four or five different versions of that. Uh, test drove them, compared them side by side just to make sure we get the the, the right combination of performance and comfort. Uh, that's really what we're shooting for for this trike. This is a final welding fixture for a frame. So what's really cool is once we, you know, let's say we have to change the seat angle. We don't like it. It's too reclined or it's too upright. Uh, we'll go in here. We'll change the um, angle. And then this fixture will automatically update and move to those new positions. Whenever we release a new model, we try to come out with something. We want to add something new that we can, you know, add to our trikes down the line, right? We want to be able to put some time in, uh, develop a new, either, you know, whether it's an end cap or dropouts or things like that. We want to be able to use them as, uh, and it's as many models as possible to help, you know, save cost and uh, supply chain and everything. It's just more efficient that way. Um, so one new thing that we came out with the Yola is a new end cap. So this part right here that gets welded onto the rear of the mainframe is all new three axis machined um, end cap, uh, which is really cool. Before it was just basically on this face here, we would weld the flat plate. So that's the finished version for the prototype. Just missing the hole there. Um, and then that's basically what you have right here. So this is, a, this is an actual part that we prototyped here uh, for that end cap. It's very cool. We have a 3D printer here. Uh, so this is a 3D print version of a locator that we're going to use for welding that end cap. So you basically take this, just plugs right in. So this is our 3D printer. Um, uh, it has a removable print bed, uh, so it's really inconvenient. When the part's done, you just take the print bed off, pop the parts off, uh, it's ready to go. Uh, but you just snap that in place, um, and it's pretty basic uh, printer. Um, it's got different linear guides for X and Y, and then Z, this height, this bed changes height uh, with this little Acme rod here. Um, but the, the, the coolest thing about this printer is uh, the dual print, the dual material capability. So inside this box here, we have the Onyx, which is a uh, nylon-based material with a chopped up fiberglass, or chopped up carbon fiber, rather. Uh, and then this is what's really special. This is a continuous fiberglass. It's basically a monofilament fiberglass line. And so wherever I set, whichever layer I select to add the reinforcing material, 
the printer will actually uh, stop. And it, on this uh, print head here, there's dual extruders. So we'll switch over to the other extruder, um, and then you'll see this unspool as it's laying down the um, melted fiberglass. That, this is one way we like to prototype. Um, and then the other way, uh, obviously, is the uh, CNC mill, which we use for a lot of things as well. Mm -hmm. uh, this is pretty new for us. But now I'm going to show you how do we um, inspect our parts, how do we inspect our fixtures, how do we build our fixtures, because this is also a tool we use to build all of our new cat track fixtures. Um, so we basically take that cat information from SolidWorks uh, for those fixtures. We'll save them off, and then we'll import them into uh, this Ferro measuring software we have over here. So I have the model already pulled up. And I'm going to walk you through how do we uh, inspect a fixture. So yeah, pull the model in. And now what I need to do is I need to select reference features that I'm going to use to measure with our coordinate measuring machine uh, to align our physical part to our virtual model. This is our ferro arm. Uh, it's a coordinate measuring machine. It's a seven axis arm. So basically all that means is there's seven different joints. Uh, this rotates around here. Uh, so a coordinate measuring machine, it basically measures the position of this point relative to the origin within that base, and then uh, can use the software to align to parts. And um, inside each joint, there's thermocouples, so it's, it's measuring for uh, temperature to account for thermal expansion and contraction of the arm because it grows and shrinks with temperature, and that affects, it's sensitive enough to affect the measurement that you're getting from this tip. Uh, it measures to about a one, one and a half thousandths of an inch. Um, human hair is three to four thousandths in diameter, so it's really accurate. Now I'll just go measure these three planes now. Okay. Now you see those planes flew across the screen and now they're um, projected onto that surface is what we wanted. So we know we have an, an accurate alignment. Um, and then this little window I pulled up over here, this is a really useful window. It's basically going to, it's a, it's a live digital readout to show me the um, basically the deviation of the part compared to CAD. We just performed our alignment, now we're going to go in and show the deviations. So I'll take my arm, and I'm just going to touch surfaces. This is a way we can perform quick checks. So we're just touching on the surfaces, and on screen you can see the probe kind of flying around, moving around, so that's, that's actually, uh, that's actually where, I'm, where I'm at in physical space. I can come in and touch the surfaces. Justin, thank you so much for showing the, us uh, what goes on here in research and development at Catrike. Oh, it was my pleasure. Thanks for stopping by. I guess that's a wrap here at the uh, Catrike factory. We have had a great time, and uh, we've gotten to see some really amazing things in the, on the factory floor. So I want to thank all these wonderful Catrike fellas for showing us around and making us feel so welcome today, especially uh, Mark Eglin for uh, giving us that wonderful tour. So. Thanks a lot, and uh, we hope you'll tune in next time on the Laid Back Bike Report. Bye-bye, guys. Bye, thanks.